New angle, who dis? I know I said that, I actually didn't say it, but I have been pretty open about the fact that I'm doing daily uploads this month as a test for myself, and I've kind of, kind of fallen down on that on the last weekend, simply because I got sick, so apologies, but we're back, we're good, all is fine. Today, we're gonna be talking about a video that I actually had um, recorded in the past. Um, as you remember, I had that video on, God, I forgot what it was even, <clears throat> how I got back into premium, that one. Uh, that basically I recorded this one at the same time, but looking back at it, I was like, this quality is trash and I'm, I am i don't like it, I want it to be better. So here we are today for a different kind of video, and today we're going to be talking about my 10 things that I love about Vanguard. And for those of you that are also content creators, or if you just want to say in the comments, feel free to also leave your own. I'm very much interested, I think this is a nice, wholesome topic to talk about in this era of, you know, where everybody just talks about the meta and decks and ban lists and all those things. I feel like it's nice to kind of settle down and talk about something a bit on the calmer side. So these things, this list, I have not changed it since, since I first recorded it. I actually rewatched that video that I made just to kind of confirm that nothing has actually changed and I'm pretty happy that my 10 things are still the same. And so this is going to be basically mostly very general stuff that can apply to everyone and then a few things that are very specific to me. So, and I think a lot of us will have those kind of lists. And I think for me, the number one thing that I really love about Vanguard and what keeps me coming back to the game as a whole is the trigger mechanic. Now. Trigger mechanic is very unique in a sense because we've had other card games that sort of do it now. You know, with Vice, we have it. Uh, Fire Emblem Cypher now also. This is a game that came out after Vanguard that also has it. Vice actually was before Vanguard and had it. But there are quite a few card games these days that have this kind of like check top card of deck for X, Y, and Z uh, kind of mechanic. But the trigger mechanic being kind of the sole turning point of the game to me is very exciting simply because this comes a lot for me as a commentator. Like, when I'm commentating, the, the two other games that I have a lot of experience commentating are Buddy Fight and Shadowverse. These are the two games that I commentate a lot. And the problems with casting those two games, and I think kind of the problem that goes to a lot of card games as a whole, is scooping. Like, when your opponent sets up a board that can't be broken in, let's say, Buddy Fight or Yu-Gi-Oh, like, there's no reason for the opponent to show more of their what they're playing, there's no reason for the opponent to waste time of the precious clock to actually try and break their board and like try to do some kind of counterplays if they can see that they're most likely not going to win and they're just already being overwhelmed, so they scoop. And so as a commentator, you know, you're casting, you go like, okay, here's their starting place, here's their starting place, oh, they're doing some combos, doing some moves, you know, things are going, 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 oh, they scooped. And that's like, you might notice from my casting of Buddy Fight, and if you've been watching me cast the Mana Search Cups for Shadowverse, that often happens, like you just can't do anything about it. And so, that's why I appreciate the trigger mechanic so much, because no matter what the game is, there's no reason to scoop. Like, because of the existence of heal triggers, or just triggers as a whole, there's no reason to ever scoop a game. So as a commentator, I'm always like, okay, turn 0, turn 1, turn 2, turn 3, oh, here's some big plays, here's some big plays, turn 4, oh my god, it's going for the win, oh my god, it's a heal trigger, oh my god, and then he still wins, and it's just like, you know, the, the, the tension keeps building up, and it never just randomly dips, it's like, oh my god, oh my god, oh, shit, he scooped, you know, it's just like, as a commentator, I really, really appreciate that aspect of it, and it just, I can't help but really, really love it. And so, but to me also, just like, when I compare it to other card games, because I've played a lot of card games in my life, you know, I've, I've made a video for a really long while ago on all the card games I play, but the trigger mechanic keeps things really exciting. I feel like also for new players it's exciting because they're just like, oh, this mechanic kind of helps me in a way to actually overcome some tough scenarios and things like that. And while the trigger mechanic to me was a better mechanic in like mid to late G era, where triggers were a nice like little touch but didn't determine win or lose, I think that, you know, nowadays, especially in standard, you know, like god hand ripping fronts or like just, you know, triggers in general, special defensives can shut down turns and it's a bit too impactful. But then the excitement and the raw like just, oh my god, what's happening kind of feeling from triggers to me is really, really important. I'm taking too long on these points. Second point, uh, second thing I love about Vanguard is the themes in the TCG. I honestly don't think there is any other card game that does themes as good as Vanguard does. Like, we have 24 different clans, and basically all of them have something different running for them. Yes, we have like three clans of knights, and yes, we have like the red zone clans kind of look similar, but there are differences, you know, it's like Narukami and, and Kagero are still very different, you know, between Thunder Dragons and Flame Dragons, you know, things like that. I guess you can argue Nubatama and Murkumo, like what's the 
difference, but then there's a difference in the playstyle and what they actually do. So, you know, you can kind of pick no matter what kind of ninjas you're into, as long as it's not human ninjas, I guess. But there's so many different aesthetics and so many different things for people to find um, just enjoyment in and just to find kind of like aesthetically pleasing. You know, for me, it's like, I can go into like, nerdy robot talk, but basically I myself prefer super robots. I still like real robots, and for the record the distinction is super robots are like Guren Lagan, like, you know, just like fighting, screaming, like hot-blooded action and like believe in your friends and believe in justice, those kind of things, whereas real robots are very much more like Gundam, Code Geass, politics, you know, war, and like just the realities of crime and, and death and things like that, and so Depending on which one you like, as a robot fan, you can pick which one you want. That's why I'm a DP main and not an overgrappler main, you know, things like that. And then, you know, there's just so many different aesthetics, so many different play styles. And it feels like every clan, you know, has changed a lot throughout the game, you know, from G to, to the reboot to standard and premium. Like, the clan identities have, you know, shifted quite a fair bit. And, like, I know some new Nectar players aren't as happy that, like, their mechanic went from cloning to tokens. But even then, it's, like, it's a unique aspect of that clan. You know, it's like, this is also kind of like, Vanguard is very much representative of the Japanese side of TCGs, you know? I've actually pl I recently tried out Battle Spirits and I was pretty interested that it also has quite a few aesthetics, but I feel like it's still not on the same level as Vanguard. And like, the Japanese side of, of the TCG market really does explore things a lot, you know? We have like Yu-Gi-Oh! and, and like Duel Masters, etc. that also try to pertain to these different aesthetics and styles, whereas the Western market is much more focused on like, more medieval archetypes and styles and artwork and you know much more westernized stuff so you won't find like robots and stuff in there as much unless they're like ancient like architecture alchemy kind of thing and you know for someone to come into vanguard it's like what if they're like i don't know they love bugs and they're like a bug catcher they have many colony for themselves you know obviously you could say like they can go play pokemon and play like a scissor deck or something but the point is, is that if you want your deck to be exclusively all bugs, you can do that in Vanguard. You don't have to mix clans, and that is a big strong point, I think, because some people are just like, I don't know, let's say a Pokemon, they're like, oh, I like, I don't know, steel types, but I don't want to mix them with this, like, electric rodent or something, you know, because they want to have their deck to be a cohesive theme, and therefore not have to mix it in with a bunch of other things. So I can really see that point being that, you know, People just love the fact that it's just one thing per deck, and if they really love it, they can just go all out on it and just play it all the time. Now, the other, the third point is community. And so for me, community is an important point, um, you know, just for the community as a whole. Some, sometimes it has downsides, sometimes it has better times, you know, where it's like more toxic, less toxic. Last year we had a lot of like random like cheating and like events like that that happened in the competitive circuit, and so that wasn't as good. But overall, the community is very helpful and overall just nice. Like, there's a lot of small circles for the community and for each country, I'm gonna come back to this, has their own little communities as well. But also for like the formats like premium, a lot of people have like small playtesting circles that they bounce ideas off each other, improve their decks together, and overall just try to help each other out all the time. And I think that's what makes premium as a format really entertaining and interesting is that you have circles of players and now teams actually that are dedicated to enhancing, discussing premium, for example. That's a really great thing in my opinion. Next is the art. I think for a lot of people, like art can be in its own video, like discussing just art, honestly, because art in Vanguard is amazing. It's drawn by a lot of famous Japanese and non-Japanese illustrators. Like there's literally like Fire Emblem illustrators, like illustrators from famous um, mobile games, like Dragalia Lost, etc. Like if you play Fire Emblem Heroes, for example, you'll find a lot of the artists that draw the units there have drawn Vanguard art, and it's just amazing. Like fake Grand Order artists draw for Vanguard. It's just, it's incredible how talented the artists are for Vanguard, and it's really amazing that Bushard goes out of their way to actually commission them. And the other thing is, is that if you've been in love with a certain unit or their art throughout the game, I feel like the V-Series is perfect for that because they've been retraining them with like new, modernized, cooler art. Like, the tonics, for example, looked like garbage back in the day, like no offense, but it really didn't look that good. And then the new art that it got in the V-Series just looked amazing, and it's so cool to see that. Number five is the creative minds of the competitive community. And I don't mean this just like, oh, the teams that have been coming up lately and like creating things like Azel, you know, GB8, but to me, this has been a thing for as long as Vanguard has existed. Like, it dates back to like Mr. Invincible Overlord back in BT01 when the game launched, like back when you could mix clans. People played Overlord and Mr. Invincible, it was just a strong combo, and it was cool. Like, that to me is creativity. You didn't let yourself be restricted by the clan uh, restrictions, which didn't exist at the time because there wasn't enough cards. But, you know, 
that already dates back to there. Then I remember we had like random Magia decks come up during the G era. Time Leap in itself was like the cards were released, people looked at them, they were like, okay, it looks interesting, you know, I'm not sure how this really works. I think in my first set breakdown for like GBT05 or 06, where like TikTok Worker came out, I was like, oh, this card's okay, you know, <laughs> and then it just like broke the format. So, you know, there was somebody that took that deck and was like, all right, here's all the combos, everybody learned it. There you go, meta for the next year, you know, and things like that. And even like um, Wiseman Loop literally was somebody's creation. Somebody was just like, okay, here's how you do it. And that's it. Like, there are insane minds in this game that come up with these combos and show them to the world that, like, are sometimes designed by Bushroot, sometimes aren't. And I think maybe, you know, sometimes they really aren't. Um, but the creative minds of the competitive community really do take that far and so going all the way from Overlord Mr. Invincible to Azel GB8 today and like all the other decks that have come up ever since then to me is really exciting it's just amazing to see the competitive creative minds that exist in this game. Number six I believe is the diverse playstyles and options especially in premium. Now this was very much the case in G. Standard is actually catching up pretty well like right now every deck more or less has at least two playstyles. I think DP is the only one that is kind of like, still just one, but like, you play Novus, you can play God Hand, you can play Beast Deities, you play Gears, oh boy, you can basically choose between, like, Chrono Jet, or, uh, Chrono Fang, or now there's, like, the, the Mystery Flare Turbo, and, like, just all those different lists, and so even Standard is, like, diversifying his plays like crazy, but in Premium, it's like, you can really play anything, you can basically, like, if you want to just play for fun, build Silverthorns, build Magia, like, build anything you want, build, like, I don't know, Blue Waves, build metal borgs like anything really and like depending on what your objective and your goal is in the game whether it's to win or just to enjoy the game and play it you know you can really do anything you want and there's so many diverse play styles and it just depends on what kind of community you pertain to and what your goal in the game is whether it's to go for the win and play the most best competitive deck or just have fun with diverse strategies and this game really does have a lot of options for that especially in premium and throughout g we really did have a lot of that too number seven if i'm not mistaken yes i'm pretty sure that this is number seven. For me, this is um, a bit more specific, but it's something that I've seen um, a lot in this community is that <clears throat> you don't have to express your love for the game just by playing it. This is really something that I noticed during my, um, when I studied in Japan and I got to be part of the community throughout like the mid to late G era. And essentially to me, it was really amazing how there are some people that barely even play the game. Like not in a bad way. I mean that they dedicate their love for Vanguard in the form of making cosplay, drawing art, like making tournaments, just being tournament hosts, or like doing like random events and stuff like that. You know, there's people that literally just like, they love making like, I don't know, plushies or like figures out of, you know, whatever materials they can find, or like making like keychains or like, like earrings, necklaces that are based off units. And there's so many people that like to do that. There's so many people that express their love for the game and the franchise by just making these things and not actually playing the game. Maybe they don't even like keep up with the game anymore and they'd still play like, I don't know, Limit Break era or like G era or something. And they just play their like Alt Mile deck or Night Rose deck or something, you know, so a lot of people, they don't restrict themselves to just playing the game to express their love for it, and I love that. The same goes to us content creators too, like, we express our love for the game by making content because we want to keep discussions going in the community, and we enjoy to actually inform people and just to talk to a camera, I guess, but that's our way of expressing love too, at least for me that's very much the point, you know, or for me, like, a lot of my love for the game is expressed through commentary, by explaining plays and making things more clear for people at home that might not understand everything that's going on or don't keep up with the game as much and still need someone to, like, you know, kind of hold their hand to make sure everything is understood. Number eight is very specific to me. I love the fact that throughout the history of the anime, there have been so many voice actors that actually play the game and love it. Like, I remember there was, like, in the G era, a lot of the G um, voice actors had, like, a little tournament that was organized by, like, the, the animation staff, basically, and so they just had a little tournament, they played their anime characters' decks, even no matter how experienced they were in Vanguard, they just did it as, like, a, you know, fun, like, drinks and games kind of evening, and that's really dope. But apart from that, we've had quite a few voice actors throughout the history of the game that are super passionate about the game itself. Henry's voice actor in particular, he's he played throughout all of G, and then like even now with uh, the modern um, Ryuzu voice actor, they're basically best friends 
so that's what they said is like they're best friends and the user's voice actor never played card games before or vanguard at least and so henry's voice actor taught him because he's been playing for years and they basically like trained him so that he would perform well on like the fight on stream with chrono fang and then you know we have Tatsuya's voice actor that plays right now, Shin's voice actor has been playing basically forever, and then also like we had uh, Chrono and Kazuma voice actors that were both really just active in the game, and it's interesting that Kazuma's voice actor, I remember I was in the Daivanga site, the Big Niner Festival in Osaka in 2018 or 17, I can't remember which year it was, but when I was there, um, I was basically like standing next to the table where Kazuma's voice actor was playing against some of the fans, and uh, basically there was a girl that pulled out a deck that had um, Yu-Gi-Oh slaves and she was like, oh, is it okay that I use this? And he's like, oh yeah, yeah, it's fine, I used to play that too. And so, you know, he's like very much active in card games and even now he's like doing Battle Spirits, like um, he's on their official channel doing like games and stuff. And so, you know, it's really cool to see a voice actor that's so active in card games and so actually like active in Vanguard too. And I feel like that's amazing. Like it really helps you connect with the characters and with the staff that make the, you know, the whole experience basically. Number eight is, no, number nine, sorry, is the fact that every anime OP is a banger. I don't like every single anime OP. There are a few like V-Road that I really, I'm just like, eh, it's okay. But then there's some that I absolutely love. But the thing is, is that every single opening, even like V-Road that I don't really like, is somebody else's favorite. Like every opening is loved by someone. And the fact that everyone, like, I feel like they've never underperformed really. Like, even if I think that one opening was less good, somebody else thinks it's amazing. And so that's really cool because the fact that they managed to produce these amazing banger openings for, like, how many years has it been? Like, nine at this point, I think? Eight or nine? And I think it's the 10th anniversary next year, right? So, yeah, pretty damn strong in that sense. And I think actually I might be releasing this video on the anniversary, so hooray! And then finally, the last point is the diverse ways that this game is enjoyed all over the world. Like, I'm really, this is something that I experienced again when I moved to Japan, um, it's just, and it keeps, every year I learn something new, like every time I go to Worlds I learn something new from watching people and talking to the international communities, you know, this isn't just saying like, oh, you know, there's like Italian, Korean, Thai versions of Vanguard, I mean, obviously that exists, and their play, like, what they have is completely different, like, Thai has like inter-school tournaments, uh, Ital Italy basically, Vanguard is like the same level of mainstream, but now they also have like a weird release schedule going on in G, but like you basically find it in like supermarkets and everything like that. It's pretty crazy how popular Vanguard is there. And then, you know, in Korea, they essentially now are doing like these insane SPs and they have like special tournaments and everything like that that other regions don't have. But the other point is, is that people really just like, some of the mannerisms are different and the way that they like play the game and their play style in general is quite different when you look at how people play from different countries. Obviously now we have teams like WCC that try to unite the different like international play styles under one team and like you know exchange these ideas to make each other better. But it was interesting when I was talking to I was I met up with the uh, popular Japanese uh, commentator Haripin. He was actually the national champion in Japan with uh, Tokyo Rambu back in the day. And so we were talking about commentary and just talking about Vanguard as a whole. And he was saying how it's interesting looking at because he came to Worlds to watch people play. And he was like, it's so interesting how the mannerisms of people are so different from Japanese. And I was like, yeah, that's really true because in Japan is like the way they handle their cards is so very precise and very like you know it's it's done in a way that everybody kind of does it and it's very like polite I guess and systematic in a way whereas he said like oh people really like they kind of do it however they want uh, from what he watched the worlds and I was like yeah that's really true you know and it's like these things I don't even notice anymore and but like people bring it up and it's really interesting that Vanguard really is enjoyed in different ways all over the world and to me that's really really fantastic and being someone that's interested in like international and intercultural dialogues and discourses like to be able to see that not just like from my like actual work but also in my you know favorite game is really amazing. So those are my 10 things I love about Vanguard. Please share yours in the comments if you're a fellow content creator feel free to make a video like this of your own too. I think it'd be fun to have this kind of discussion. So yeah those are my 10. What are yours? So that's gonna be it for me today. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you to all the channel members as well. If you want to become one, you can click the join button next to the subscribe button. But I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.